What's up guys and welcome back to Tackle Tuesday. I'm really starting to enjoy these segments where we break down some tackles, some gear, and tell you the pros and cons, the straight up scoop, guys. You know, non, really unbiased here. Um, and then we give it away to you. So, you know, to be eligible, I wanna remind you, share, comment on the post, you know, like the post, then make sure you're a member of Florida Sport Fishing TV Plus, our streaming site at fsftv.com. So we're gonna talk about kite fishing and we're gonna talk about this Tigris all-purpose kite. I've had a bunch of these lying around here um, and I wanted to just kind of get them out there and get them into your hands. I don't use them. It's not my favorite kite by any means. Uh, but first, before we get into that, let's talk about kite fishing in general. Incredibly effective, not only throughout the winter for sail fishing, being able to present baits on or near the surface on the downwind side of the boat, uh, down current, you know, depending on how you're fishing, incredibly effective tactic throughout the winter, but also all year long here in South Florida. Um, blackfin tunas, dolphin, king mackerel, wahoo, those are all incredibly popular kite fishing targets. Bonitas, cobia, blackfin tunas, muttons, bluefin tunas, you know, you just never know what's going to jump on a kite bait. Yellow fins, guys catch all sorts of stuff. Um, so it's something that you really need to have in your arsenal, okay? You really do. If you want to be an effective fisherman here in South Florida, honestly, you've got to kite fish, you know? And it's not just me telling you this. I mean, come on, guys, look at the sailfish tournaments. Everyone's kite fishing. Look at the meat fish tournaments where they're targeting, you know, kingfish, dolphin, cobia, wahoo, you know, blackfin tunas, you know, all of the meat fish. Everybody's kite fishing and they're flying two and sometimes three kites. So it's really that in itself just proves to you how effective the tactic is. So a lot of different kites out there. Bob Lewis um, is a real popular kite. Of course, the SFEs, those are the most popular. The, black, the red, the green SFE kites, honestly, those are the best kites, you know, dollar for dollar. That's why everybody fishes them. I'm not, don't take my opinion for it, all right? Just get out there on a busy weekend during the summer. Get out there on a sailfish tournament and just look up in the sky, up and down the edge of the reef, how many red and green kites you see versus yellow or any other color. You know, the number's astronomical. However, that doesn't mean that there's not some other good products out there, especially if you're just getting into kite fishing. So let's take a look at this Tigris all-purpose kite, all right? Uh, comes in a nice package, you know, and a nice tube. All-purpose will exceed all of your expectations and fly steady in 10 to 15 mile an hour winds with a single, with a single adjustment to the bridle, eliminating the need for different kites for different winds. Lightweight spars are constructed of 100% carbon graphite. That's bullshit, I'm gonna tell you right now. It doesn't fly in 10 to 15. This kite will actually fly in a much wider range of wind. I found that it's not a great low wind kite because I have fished them, I have tried them. And like I said, I always go back to the SFEs. I just have so much more confidence in the SFE kites, you know, and they're more versatile, more reliable, but I have flown these Tigris kites as well, and they will fly in 10 to 20, even above 20 miles an hour. I find that the breezier it is actually, the more effective this kite will be. So it's a great kite when there is a little bit more wind, when there's not that much wind, it may be a little challenging to fly. Fabric wise, I don't know, you know exactly what this fabric is, if it's nylon, like some kind of fast drying material, um, I don't know exactly what they manufacture it from or construct it from, but it seems to be, you know, pretty durable. I've never had the actual fabric itself in any way tear or, you know, fail in any way. So fabric wise, it seems to be, you know, fine. The components here with the string and the little, you know, kind of housing in the center there, you know, why is, there we go. This is a little tight on this spar. And of course you want your graphite spars to be tight. That one just seemed a little bit tight. Let's see if we can go ahead and put this together. And clearly, as you can see, okay, the way that you assemble these kites is obviously the graphite spars, the tips go up at the end, 
And then obviously they sit in this cross brace, this cross member right in the middle here. Now it looks like they actually give you five spars. So one spare. That's pretty nice, you know, because they do break. Let me tell you something right now. These carbon fiber spars, if you have been kite fishing, you know that they break, you know, and they usually break from angler error. We break them. We step on it, you know, maybe when attaching a balloon, um, we're just a little bit too aggressive, you know, again, whatever it may be, but we do break them. So there's the fourth one. I'm going to pop that in right there. We'll take a look at it. Okay, now being fully assembled, here's our kite right here. Okay, and now let's take a closer look at all of the components. We'll start right at the back. Um, look, seems to be sewn pretty well. I mean, not much different, better or worse than many other kites. I mean, I don't know. I kind of, when I think about this and I look at how SFE kites are assembled, I think that an SFE might be a little bit better grade, but this isn't a competition. That's not what this is about. We're, we're talking about this kite. You know, these spars sit in here. They're relatively tight. They sit in pretty tight. Okay, the string is the string. Nothing you could do about that. Obviously hardware, we've got some swivels. Clearly you could see, that's not the world's greatest swivel, but it's not a terrible swivel. Okay, it's not some cheese, you know, it looks like it's medium grade. Obviously, it'll get the job done. You've got your little bridle right here with slides. Okay, this is what you're gonna use to make slight adjustments to how that kite flies. I'll show it to you again right there, and it has the hash marks. You just move that in very small increments. So, very easy to put together. You know, you saw that. I mean, we took it out of the tube. We had this kite assembled in literally a matter of seconds. Looks pretty good. Not a terrible kite. Certainly better than not kite fishing at all. And I would have to say, you know, short of the SFE kites, which are more of that tournament grade, a little bit higher level, this probably ranks as your next best option. Okay, it really does. I mean, I don't know what they retail for, but whatever it is, it's a good option. One thing I want to tell you though, look, be sure at the end of the trip, after flying the kite, rinse it off with fresh water, okay? Let it dry naturally. Don't put it away wet. Don't store it wet. Don't let it build up all of that salty residue. Really important that you keep it clean. You know, here's just an example though, right? When I look at that, Look at that fabric right on the end. It's not exactly straight, you know, and there's nothing that I can do about that. I don't know if it's the cut of the fabric, whatever it is, but there's a little bit of an imperfection, it seems, right on that corner right there. Let me just make sure all of my spars are fully inserted and that it's not user error or anything like that. Yeah, that seems, and plus it's new, you know, it's gotta stretch out a little bit. So, I don't know, you know, Look, if I was gonna go buy a kite today, would I buy this kite? No, I wouldn't. I would spend a little bit more money on the SFE if I was really you know, into kite fishing. If I was looking to replace an existing kite or you know, if I do a lot of kite fishing, certainly tournament fishing, I'm going SFE all the way. It's me and everybody else, okay? Um, on the other hand, if you just wanna try kite fishing, you know, this is a great alternative. It's a great alternative. There's no reason you can't get your hands on a tigerous kite, get out there, fly it, catch a few fish, you know, and then obviously move up from there if you'd like, especially if you're putting a balloon on. I'm gonna tell you right now, this kite will probably be a little bit more finicky, will probably be a little bit more touchy to fly without a balloon than your, some of the other ones that are out there. But as long as you attach a balloon to this, there's no reason whatsoever why this thing isn't gonna get the job done. So you make that decision as to what's best for you, you know, but I think at the end of the day, what's most important is that you're kite fishing. Okay, that's what's most important is that you're out there presenting baits on or near the surface and catching fish that you would have otherwise not caught. You know, I think that's more important than ultimately what kite you choose. So easy, again, an extra spar right there. I have found with these though, I gotta be honest. If one breaks, replacing it 
makes the kite even a little more finicky to fly, okay? That it really likes its original spars, you know, and once you start replacing them, the lengths sometimes are just a little bit different and they just become harder to fly. Again, that's without a balloon because putting a helium balloon on here changes the game altogether and it changes the entire dynamics of the kite, how it flies, what it's doing. Um, but without that balloon, I think it's going to be a little bit more finicky. And don't try and interchange these. Don't go at the, you know, the, this may be a good spare for this kite, but it probably isn't a good spare for another Tigris kite. The length might be a little bit different. So, and as a matter of fact, speaking of length, let's just take a look here. Let's pop out these spars. This will be interesting to see. The consistency. How consistent are these spars, okay? Because that's gonna play a big role. It really is in the overall performance of the kite. It's about details. You guys out who have been out there kite fishing know that successful kite fishing and flying kites is about the details, every little detail. Your kite rods, your line, your, you know, everything, including these spars. So let's see here. Wow, okay, so we're got them all lined up. And in all honesty, you can, you can see yourself. I don't know if you can see that, but there is some discrepancy there, okay? It does look like four out of the five are pretty close, but the fifth one is a little bit shorter. It has actually a few of them are different lengths. So, you know, everything is perfectly straight here. You're looking at it with your own eyes. There is just a little bit of inconsistency right there. Um, I'm not going to say that everybody else's kites are consistent or not. They're not sitting in my hand right now looking. I'm just telling you what I'm seeing from here. So remember, it's all in the details. You make the decision. But you know what? At the end of the day, I'm going to give this kite to you. And I want you to go out there, fly it, you know, use it get into kite fishing, use it as a spare, use it as your primary kite, you know, and catch some fish on it. Let us know how you do. Remember, like, share, comment, become a member, Florida Sport Fishing TV Plus at fsftv.com. And tomorrow, we'll pick the winner of this kite. Hopefully it's you.